Now, if you ever take a visit to the White House webpage and type in government transparency, you'll find a memo from President Obama declaring his policy on open government. He states government should be transparent. Transparency promotes accountability and provides information for citizens about what their government is doing. Now, while that's Obama's stated intentions, his actions speak a little louder than words. According to a report released yesterday by the Committee to Protect Journalists, President Obama has fallen short of his promise. The report details how the administration has been curbing routine disclosures of information and how the aggressive prosecution of leakers under the Espionage Act has created a chilling effect on potential government sources. Under the Obama administration, six government employees and two contractors, including Edward Snowden, have been charged under the Espionage Act. That's compared to just three such prosecutions in all previous U.S. administrations combined. Here to shed some light on that discrepancy and talk a little bit more about the report's findings, I'm joined by both the host and producer of Breaking the Set, Abby Martin and Manuel Rapalo. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It's great to have you on. So Abby, the CPJ report is saying what you've said on the show thousands of times. Basically, uh, uh, you know, the president's uh, crackdown on free speech has been the same, if not worse, than that of President Bush. What for you stands out as some of the most egregious policies that's been, uh, that have been employed by this administration? Well, I was a little surprised to see this report coming out from the CPJ because this is an organization that for the last 30 years has been really focused on war zones and journalists being killed in the line of fire. So for them to kind of take initiative on the home front um, shows you that this is a really unprecedented move, a lot of um, unprecedented trends going on with the Obama administration. Um, and really, you know, the thing that's so tragic about it is that he campaigned himself as a transparency president. So it's just, I think that that's really just so tragic. The things that stand out the most to me, of course, as you just mentioned, the eight people charged under this archaic World War I piece of legislation designed to prosecute spies um, under the Espionage Act. And on top of that, you see completely ridiculous um, seizures of phone records under establishment media organizations, AP. Fox News. I mean, so when you're calling out Fox News and AP journalists that are actually establishment journalists, then you know that something's uh, really in trouble here. Absolutely. I think you hit it right on the mark there. But Manny, you know, Abby mentioned this, but CPJ does typically focus on war zones, on countries that are outside of the United States. This is actually the first report uh, that they've done uh, on the status of press freedom in the country, in the United States. What do you think that says? I mean, this is an organization, organization CPJ, that's been around for, for decades, and this is the first year. Absolutely. No, <laughs> just, done this. And just the ducktail off of, of what Abby said, this is absolutely unprecedented. Uh, CPJ is focused on war zones, countries, and, and not just war zones, but countries where it's actually very just dangerous in general to, to be uh, a journalist for political reasons, places like Honduras, Egypt, Syria, where uh, these are regarded as some of the most dangerous countries in the world to be a journalist. So why the United States? Well, that what that signifies, at least to, to, to me from a journalistic point of view, is the actual shift that we've taken from the Bush administration to the Obama administration. We're under Bush. What journalists were getting, what whistleblowers were getting, were, were mere threats of like, hey, look, uh, we're not going to be uh, persecuting you, but you better stop doing this. Under Obama, that's all become a reality. And like Abby mentioned, eight people uh, persecuted on the Espionage Act. That's absolutely unprecedented. These are, uh, this includes people like Edward Snowden and, um, and you know, the, the other folks as well. But I mean, I just want to read you one quote. It's, um, this is from Jane Mayer from The New Yorker who said, it's a huge impediment to reporting and so chilling isn't quite strong enough. It's more like freezing the whole process. So really what this shows you is that the Obama administration may very well be the worst when it comes to press freedoms since the Nixon years. And it's amazing how many reporters came out um, in, in this report and really talked about how they've never covered a, a presidency, uh, you know, with more secrecy. And so that's, that was really amazing. But you mentioned Edward Snowden. Abby, I wanted to talk to you uh, about him because he was the latest whistleblower charged under the Espionage Act. Um, of course, he's not in the United States, so he won't be, uh, be tried, at least not, not yet. Uh, what kind of effect would you say that Snowden and the entire NSA scandal uh, has really had on uh, the public's perception of their privacy, their right to privacy. Well, how sad is it that we have whistleblowers seeking asylum in Russia and journalists who are covering uh, the leaks hiding out in Brazil and their partners hiding out in Berlin. I mean, that's the state of the world today where they can't even reside in this country because of the fear of being persecuted. Um, it completely blew the lid off everything. Um, it's something that we've known for a long time since 9-11. We kind of knew the overreach of the Patriot Act, but really we didn't realize how far it went. And even though we've been saying that for years and years, we didn't have the proof in our hands. So Edward Snowden really blew the lid off everything. Everyone in the entire country knows that not only are we being spied on, not only is our metadata being collected, but it reaches 
reaches far beyond just the borders of this country and it goes to spying on people in Brazil with no constitutional protections whatsoever, sharing this data with Israel and other allies of the U.S. So I think we are in a state of shock, still recovering from the fact that we've kind of had sure. all of our beliefs consolidated and confirmed. <laughs> Indeed, I think it was a really pivotal moment. Um, but Manny, I wanted to ask you uh, about, uh, you know, the administration's defense of this. W what they say is that, you know, we have, for every FOIA request that, that has been submitted to the government, uh, we have released that information. We've been, we've been as transparent as we can possibly be. Um, and I think that their reaction has been, you know, pretty, pretty fair, I guess. Uh, uh, so what do you think? Uh, do you think the administration should be getting any kind of credit for uh, no, for this. absolutely not. I think that it's ridiculous, and, and I think that the actual term that they use is like, we've been very speedy when it comes to this. Well, if the, the, the word they choose to use is speedy, I don't know what method of, of time calculation they're using. From the State Department alone to get financial records from the, the, the previous Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, it takes upwards of a year to get information. That's from the State Department, let alone the intelligence agencies like the CIA and FBI and NSA, who will constantly be bouncing back and forth, uh, oh, you know, this is in our jurisdiction, you're going to need to uh, do this for a request from, from NSA. NSA is like, oh, you know what? We did away with those records. You're going to have to go check with the archive. So th I think it's really, um, if, if they're touting this, this is absolutely erroneous. It's, it's terrible for them to say that, oh, you know, we're being very, very speedy. And another thing that the Obama administration is guilty of is overclassification. So when you get your hands on a FOIA request, um, half that stuff uh, you can't even read because things that may not even be a matter of national security are now all of a sudden overclassified. And that has a, a chilling effect of its own for government employees to say, look, um, we're not sure of whether or not this is a gray area where this is classified or not classified, so we're just not going to talk to you. So that's having its own effect as well. Absolutely. And, and Abby, we know that this is not just about government sources anymore. We know that journalists uh, are being targeted. Uh, it calls into a question another a really controversial Obama policy, the NDAA, the Indefinite Detention Clause uh, of the NDAA. Can you talk about that provision a little bit and just how it sort of feeds into this, this whole thing? Yeah, I think that's why people are so concerned is because we've seen this move, a really egregious move on, on part of the Obama um, signing into law the NDA, the National Defense Authorization Act, Section 1021, which uh, authorized the indefinite detention of people who are an associated force with al-Qaeda or terrorists. And we already know that that term is so general, so subjective, that it can really be anyone. And journalist Chris Hedges uh, tried to sue the administration by saying, hey, I've been embedded with what you call terrorists, what you deem terrorists, and I could be indefinitely detained by the military with no habeas cop corpus. I mean, we're talking about a policy that goes back centuries, Magna Carta. I mean, this concept of be having due process and a fair trial is so foundational um, to democracy and to just free freedom. Um, and I think that that's just very terrifying when you see that coupled in with the war on whistleblowers and the war on press. Terrifying indeed. Well, I love talking to you guys. I could talk to you for hours. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, host of Breaking the Set, Abby Martin, and of course, the wonderful producer, Manny Rapolo. Welcome back, Amira. Thank you. <laughs>